in the third quarter of this year, which is a three month period, electric car sales grew by a staggering 48%. Plug-in hybrid sales grew by 3.9%. 3.9 versus 48. Legacy automakers, many of them are saying they're canceling the EV programs because people, hybrids are what people want. But the actual sales data says that is a flat out lie and is completely untrue. BYD and Tesla continued to dominate the global electric car market. In the latest stats from Trendforce, we have the 10 biggest EV brands worldwide. It's quite an interesting list, actually. Let's have a quick look. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. And BYD retained its position as the number one seller of EVs. I'm not talking about plug-in hybrids here. I'm just talking about the EVs they sell with 15.4% global market share. However, its sales actually declined compared to the second quarter per report released today by market research firm Trendforce. And the truth is BYD sales in China have been falling pretty significantly over the last few months but their sales outside of China have grown enormously. For example, last month, BYD sales in Germany grew by 200% versus last year. Tesla's went down by around 40%. Tesla ranks second globally though, with a 13.4% market share just behind BYD, posting robust third quarter sales growth of 29% quarter on quarter. So these top 10 brands in the world in terms of EV sales, this doesn't include plug-in hybrids or HEVs, you know, mild hybrids or EREVs. This is just purely electric car sales. So a little bit confusing. There's some data that comes out from, particularly from Clean Technica. And when they show you market share, a lot of people get confused because they usually show you market share data that includes hybrids. This is not, this is just EVs. BYD, you can see, has 15.4% market share worldwide. Tesla, 13.4%. Sake, General Motors Wooling, so it's a tri-venture, 33% owned by Sake, 33% owned by General Motors, and 33% owned by Wooling. They have 6.1%. Geely have 6%. Leap Motor, 4.1%. Xiaopeng or Xpeng, 3.1%. Volkswagen Group, 2.9%. So the Volkswagen Group, I think they've included the Volkswagen Group brands like uh, Skoda, Seat, I believe Audi as well, but not Porsche. Xiaomi, 2.9%. Uh, Hyundai, 2%. And BMW, 2%. Now, a lot of focus is on Tesla and what their sales are doing, but some of these companies are doing really well, as you can see. I mean, Xpeng wasn't in this list last year in the top 10. Uh, Xiaomi wasn't in this list in the top 10. Uh, Leap Motor wasn't in this list in the top 10. So there's been some pretty big changes, but some companies, their sales have declined. So Volkswagen's market share hasn't grown. Uh, neither has Hyundai's. Uh, in fact, Hyundai's market share has gone down. But to give you some actual numbers here, BYD, they actually sold 582,500 EVs, purely electric cars, in the third quarter of this year. And that's a 31% year-on-year increase, but a 4% decline from the second quarter. So those numbers still sound pretty good, right? I mean, 31% increase year on year. But BYD's plug-in hybrid sales have fallen drastically. In fact, in the last quarter, they're, they're down nearly 30%. That's the reason for BYD's um, sort of surprising decline in sales over the past couple of months compared to last year. Tesla only produces EVs and they delivered 497,000 vehicles globally in the third quarter, which was a 7.4% year on year increase and a 29% rise from the second quarter. Tesla's growth momentum uh, came, some of it came from the US market, 
ending the EV tax credit at the end of September. And it also did achieve some small growth in China. Geely and Leap Motor, they demonstrated remarkable growth momentum, says CNET Post in the third quarter, capturing 6% and 4.1% market share respectively. Same thing for Xiaopang. I mean, Xpeng ranking sixth in the global EV market is a phenomenal result with 3.1% market share. Xiaomi, in also incredible. I mean, we're talking about a new EV company here, 2.9%. So isn't this kind of crazy that, you know, BYD, uh, Xiaomi, Xpeng, Leap Motor, these guys are just single-handedly um, beating in the entire Volkswagen group easily, beating the entire uh, Hyundai conglomerate really easily. If you include FEVs um, in the, well, in the FEV market, actually, BYD has a leading position. It has 27.9% market share, but its market share is falling pretty quickly in the global FEV market. And the reason is because of rivals in China that are offering cars that are probably in some ways a little better uh, at prices that are similar, or in sometimes prices that are actually even lower. Facing market saturation and intense competition in China, BYD saw big sales growth outside of China, particularly in the third quarter. Now, if you look at the market share by FEV, this does not include e-revs, just FEVs. It's quite interesting, isn't it? BYD with 27.9%, uh, Ato 6.8%, Cherry 6.6%, Geely 6.2%, Li Auto 4.5%, Chang'an 3.4%, Lincoln Co 3.3%, Lincoln Co sales increased pretty significantly recently. Mercedes-Benz 3.2, BMW 2.9%, and Toyota, Toyota only 2.6%. Uh, pretty small numbers there from Toyota. BYD's third quarter FEV sales were 523,000, down 24% year on year, uh, which is quite interesting. A lot more range, a lot of them too. So customers, some customers are deciding they want one of those instead. As a result, um, Leap Motors' third quarter sales declined both sequentially and also year on year. Global new energy vehicles, as in a combination of plug-in hybrids, e-revs, and fully electric cars, reached 5.4 million sales in the third quarter. That's a 31% year on year increase versus the same quarter of last year. However, interestingly, EV sales are growing much faster than plug-in hybrids. The, the global media are telling this completely nonsensical story, saying that hybrid sales are the, is where everything's growing. That's a completely false because EV sales were 3.71 million, right, in the third quarter of this year. So within those three months, 3.7 million. That's growth of 48%. While plug-in hybrid sales were less than half of that at 1.67 million, rising 4%, 4%. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? All these automakers, legacy manufacturers saying, oh, EV sales aren't, aren't very good. We're, we're going to cancel our EV programs. We're going to make hybrids because that's where the market is. It's not, as you can see. Plug-in hybrid sales, I should say, have grown by just under 4%, whereas EV sales are up 48%, right? In those three months, 48 freaking percent. That's crazy. Trendforce projects that global new energy vehicles sales will reach 20.43 million in 2025, representing 25% year on year growth. Now, 25% doesn't sound so good, does it? But the reason is, well, it's because plug in hybrid sales are letting the team down. They're barely increasing. I mean, a 4% growth is nothing, negligible. Global new energy vehicle sales are projected to hit 22.8 million units in 2026. So Trendforce is saying sales next year will only increase by 12%. I think that's highly unlikely. I think they're more likely, if you look at EV sales next year, I think EV sales next year will grow by probably a further 40 to 50%. And it's pretty likely that by 2028, EV sales worldwide will grow to more than 50% market share. At least that's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.